Hello and welcome to Fenextra. I'm Emily Haller and I'm here with Anders Olofsson and Michael Lind of DNH. And we're at Next Gen Banking Nordics 2016 in Helsinki. Thank you both for joining me. Welcome. How do you think changing consumer requirements will shape Next Gen Banking? I think the change is already taking place in the retail side as well. On the retail side, it's very much a consumer driven game, has been real time payments, has been going on for a long time. If you have, for example, SWIP, uh, in, uh, in Denmark and you have Swish in Sweden, consumers already today expect to have real-time banking at their fingertips. What about business customers and corporates? How are their evolving needs going to shape the landscape? Now this is an interesting area as well when it comes to corporates. Uh, that will have a huge impact on the transaction banking landscapes as well for the banks, both from the re loss of revenue or potentially gaining more revenue as from a banking point of view as well. Already today we can see that there are a number of corporates demanding real-time payments from the banking services, such as the UK Faster Payments, a number of corporates are already processing in a high degree of the salaries, same name salaries in the, uh, in the UK Faster Payment Scheme. At the same time, we also see corporates demanding real-time payment service from their banks, uh, for example in Singapore, to allow their customers to transact in real time. And uh, banks that are not ready to provide real-time services, which very much are hygiene factors or will become hygiene factors, are actually facing a huge risk of losing a lot of revenue going forward. And as if changing customer needs are one factor driving the transformation of banking, then regulation is another. How do you see PSD2 impact in the industry? Well, it's interesting though, because um, recalling a year from now, when we were here in uh, Next Gen Banking in Finland, uh, there were no mentioning about PSD2, nor about anything around the open API. And I also remember six months ago when I was consulting banks, I'd say that 20% of banks realize the business opportunity around PSD2. Um, at about 50% to 60% were in full denial. And I think now, six months later, banks are catching up and they are adopting pretty much two different strategies. Um, some banks are trying to partner with fintechs uh, to adopt their technology into their environment. Uh, others are trying to do their own development like they've done for the last 20 years. So I think that there's going to be a race going forward for the next two years where we're going to see a multiple and changing business model taking place. Some banks focusing on enabling their channels, getting closer to the customers, whilst others will try to be as compliant as they can with the PSD2 requirements. And the development of the business models can be extremely interesting. So how well are banks responding to the challenges and opportunities of PSD2 so far? Well, again, I think that there's, there's a dual approach. Some still partly in denial or trying to keep up with regulation to be compliant. Some banks are seeing and, and trying to, um, to take this opportunity to integrate with the customers um, and with partners or fintechs. So I think that there's, we see, again, a division of, of business models. So would this transform the banking industry as we know it today? I think that it dramatically will. Um, we used to do the analogy to the energy sector where there's about a handful of large el electricity producers today in, across Europe. And there's an Italian, an, an, an English, a Spanish, a Swedish provider. Whilst there are thousands of electricity company providing electricity and selling electricity. So I think that we will have, maybe not in five years, but in, in 10 years time, we will have a very limited number of cross-European mega banks or super banks that would be holding and giving uh, credits and also providing the deposits for those uh, new entrants but also existing banks provisioning uh, all kind of services utilizing the APIs of those banks. So that's where the change is going to be. So I think that there's going to be a division of banks into two, um, similar to electricity market. Anders, Michael, thank you very much. Thank, thank you. you. And thank you for watching.